We know that despotic forms of government dismiss the significance and value of individual human lives. Today, we'll explore the vital role state legislation plays in the battle of ideas and the protection of life. Brian Johnston is the Western Director of the National Right to Life Committee. He has served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters, where your program on the right to life, on the very real battle of ideas that swirls around that unique statement, that unique idea that you have in every human life has a right to life and that you've been endowed by your creator with that, not by the government, and yet that the government does have a duty to protect the lives of those that it governs, and in particular the innocent. And something happened in 1973. The right to life was suspended under the law. It was declared by the Supreme Court a falsehood. It was declared that they didn't know and one cannot know when life begins. But it was very well known. And we've known about mammalian conception since 1836, when it was witnessed under a modern microscope. The beginning of life is not a debating point. And the fact is, it's the dismissal of all life in the womb, all the way up until birth. And as you now know, even after birth, if the goal is to kill the child, the right to life of innocent human beings was suspended in January of 1973. And now we have to live with the implications of that, and those implications are grave. Soon, I believe, we're going to see an overturn of Roe v. Wade and its companion decision, Doe v. Bolton. You need to know about those decisions and what they did. When that overturn happens, you're going to have a lot of madness in the news, a lot of misrepresentation. But the facts are simple. States will once again be free to again protect innocent children in the womb. I want to remind you that it's up to states, laws regarding homicide, laws regarding violence against the person. These are all determined on the state level. And many different states have different laws regarding homicide. Here in California, where I'm speaking, there's actually a law regarding homicide in the womb of an unborn child. And Scott Peterson right now looks out across the northern part of San Francisco Bay, San Pablo Bay, because he is there at the prison at San Quentin. And he can look at the very water where he killed both his wife and his son, Connor, because he's in prison for two homicides of the first degree. And it's an irony, because the fact is, is that the law has always considered the child in the womb worthy of protection. And up through the... Middle Ages in common law, that before quickening, which is when you can actually see or feel the child moving, they weren't quite sure before that. But after quickening, the law considered this a human being that needed some kind of protection. And that protection was offered in every state starting in the 1880s because science showed us that that is a human baby and every state has started adopting laws. Those were all overturned in 73. Today, we're going to talk about right now in California and some of the legislation that's come down in California, what your state legislators have done when Roe versus Wade is overturned, which could be very soon. Your state and every state is going to be free to do something about those babies in the womb. Right now, not many Californians pay attention to their state legislature. You need to. If you call yourself pro-life, you need to know where your legislators stand. We're going to fill you in on some dramatic changes that hit the legislature and decisions that were made the final week of the 2019 legislative session. Life Matters continues after this. They say sunlight is the best disinfectant. Did you know that California has a law in the books that says you need to protect babies born alive in the course of an abortion? But that law is simply ignored. The current legislature and Governor Newsom's administration support all abortions all the time. And they simply do not examine or regulate the practice even though our tax dollars pay for it. We need to shine a light on this cover-up of the abortion industry in our state. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org and click on the Light of Day Project. We need the facts about late-term abortion to be examined and made known. We need the government doing its job to protect lives. We need the Light of Day on this. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org.
Well, hi. I just wanted to thank you for joining me. You know, I have good friends, children, young adults, and adults that have Down syndrome. And they are so loved. Their parents love them so much because they're the happiest people you'd ever want to know. I really love them. I'm going to tell you something, though, that's rather frightening. The government of France has now prohibited showing positive images of Down syndrome children and letting parents know how lovable they are. That's an actual law in France. Here in the U.S., 80-some-odd percent of Down syndrome kids are killed by abortion before they're born. In France, it's 96 percent. So we're not a whole lot better. If you'd like to help out, you can go to the National Down Syndrome Society, NDSS.org, to help out. That's NDSS.org. We really are in a battle of ideas, and lives really are at stake. Life Matters is sponsored by the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of the National Right to Life Committee. To find out more on how you can help and be involved right where you are, go to californiaprolife.org. That's californiaprolife.org. We'll tell you how you can get involved in your local community, how you can be effective if you want to be a pro-life speaker. We have training programs and open doors of opportunity for you to speak on a life issue. If you'd like to donate your car or a boat, you can do that at californiaprolife.org. Car easy makes it easy and you find that on our website we get the most of any donation program car easy allows us to get the most out of your car maybe you're not getting the trade-in value you want maybe it's just not running the way it used to let your car be used for life go to californiaprolife.org and find out what you can do to make a difference californiaprolife.org be sure to subscribe to the life matters podcast with brian johnston go to lifematters.life to subscribe Hi, I'm Kevin Sorbo, and I was very excited when I heard about LifeFest Film Festival. LifeFest is the film festival dedicated to showcasing films that affirm the intrinsic worth of innocent human life and the profound significance of each life. One seemingly insignificant person can in fact change the whole world in which he or she lives. That one singular life ends up being of vital importance. I'm so glad to hear that you are cherishing that in this film festival and are committed to artfully and creatively protect the lives of those who can't possibly promote themselves. Life Film Fest is dedicated to bring the message of life to Hollywood and to our culture. Go to lifefilmfest.com and get your tickets now. That's lifefilmfest.com. Find out about the exciting cultural change impacting Hollywood. Go to LifeFilmFest.com. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. We're going to talk about what happened in the final week of the legislative session in Sacramento, California. Now, for some people, your eyes are just going to glaze. And you know why? It's something that's alarmed me. I have found that many pro-life people are basically like a lot of Americans. They have no idea how laws are made. And yet pro-life people are very upset about the law. Yet they have no idea and actually no interest. And that is really crushing when you look at the situation we're in. Because we will soon have an opportunity to change the laws and the lawmakers of our nation regarding Roe versus Wade and unlimited abortion on demand. You know, I've had people drop in, and, and I'm not picking on them, but they'll drop in in Sacramento and say, hey, I'm going to be in Sacramento. Should I visit my congressman while I'm there? Well, as you probably know, they have their geography and their civics not quite right. And that's understandable because the majority of Americans don't fully understand the civic process. But we should. It's a gift to us from our founders. You can actually influence and change the laws. You can change what's happening in your society, and laws are what do it. Some people say, I wish they were tongue-in-cheek, but they say, oh, you can't legislate morality. I'm sorry. Legislation is public morality. Legislation is an assertion of the public mores, morals, and public virtues of our nation. Some people have told me, oh, well, you're never going to stop abortion. People are going to get abortions anyways. Well, you know, that apparently is true. And there were a limited number of abortions before Roe versus Wade. But the abortion movement lies. 
It was a very limited number. I know one of the founders of NARAL, he has since passed away, Dr. Bernie Nathanson. And Dr. Nathanson said they completely manufactured the stories about abortion before Roe v. Wade to justify emotionally legalizing it. So they will assert you can't stop abortion. It's going to happen anyways. Well, you know, you can't stop car thefts. I hope you realize that. People are going to steal cars anyway. So how dare you say it's illegal? If your car is stolen, how dare you be upset? You should let people have your car. What a moralist you are. You're trying to legalize morality. And you can't legalize morality. No, I'm afraid that ultimately people will do what they're determined to do. But the purpose of the law is to guide and direct. And really, ultimately, when it comes to human lives, not just property like cars, the purpose of the law is to protect innocent lives that can't protect themselves. That's the reason we live in society. We need policemen. Most of the time, I think I'm pretty capable of protecting myself. I don't want it to go to my head, but I don't get hassled by big, tough guys because uh, I pretty much know how to be around those people, and I don't pick fights, but they wouldn't want to pick a fight with me. It's those people who can't defend themselves. It's those people who are vulnerable. It's when grandmas and grandpas can't defend themselves. It's when babies can't defend themselves that a policeman is really needed, and there's a time when you and I might need a policeman because their job is to protect the public, the innocent public, from those who would do them harm. That's the reason we exist in society. That's the reason there are laws. And yes, that's the reason, Virginia, there are laws and there were laws against human abortion before 1973. So please don't take the detached, rather saintly and smug attitude. I don't want to care about the laws or lawmakers. I'm above that. I'm a holy person. I'm spiritual. If you really understand the nature of our spiritual battle, you will realize the legalizing of abortion in the United States of America is one of the most grotesque actions of the Western world, of Western civilization. Just as grotesque as the human holocaust of Germany in the 1940s. And yes, my friend, if you consider yourself spiritual, you're going to want to know how these laws came to pass, and you're going to want to know how to bring legalized abortion to an end. So yes, you have a responsibility. So it is discouraging in a place like California. Other states, pro-life individuals have been involved and they elect pro-life legislators. There's a certain detachment and a certain laissez-faire, casual approach in California that we pay a price for if we don't watch who's making our laws. As was said long ago, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. You got to watch who's doing what. In our California legislature, we've got a Democrat legislature that is the most radical that has ever come to California. And as you're probably aware, if you're watching politics in any way, the politics of this current Democrat party are beyond anything imaginable. It makes people like John F. Kennedy and other previous Democrats look like conservative Republicans. It really does. And not just on the life issue. We're a single-issue show to deal just with the issue of defending and protecting innocent life. There's a lot of issues related to that. So we don't get into other issues, but I assure you, if you looked at the package of bills, the madness, the redefinition of reality that the state legislature in Sacramento has just enacted, it will make your head swim. So go ahead and look at other issues. I'll touch on one briefly, but when you tell children in second grade, that they might be another gender than they are. And when that's forced on them, and when you force the teachers in public schools to make sure that they're teaching that, there's something a little bit odd going on culturally. That's just one small example. Clearly on the life issues, the disregard for innocent human lives is palpable. And one measure in particular, SB 24, if you follow our program, SB 24 legalizes the distribution, the government-sponsored distribution of the abortion drug RU486. Just a quick reminder, RU486 is taken by a woman after she's missed her second period. So that child is very far along. This is not a morning after pill. RU486 actually works because it's a very powerful steroid and it attacks not the baby, it attacks the mother's body. And it tells the mother hormonally, oh, you're not pregnant anymore. 
So don't give that child any nutrition. And what happens is the child withers in the womb. It loses nutrition of all kinds, including fluids, and literally withers on the vine, you might say, within the mother's womb. It would eventually be expelled, but the regimen requires a second dosage of what's known as mifeprestone, which causes the woman to spontaneously reject everything in her uterus. And it's a very dangerous and grotesque action. I won't describe it any further, but you need to know it's also very dangerous. So SB24 was introduced. It will distribute these drugs on every state college and university campus. It came across some hurdles. One of the hurdles is this time around and looking at it, it was examined a little more closely. We've examined this issue in California before, and the radical pro-abortion governor, Jerry Brown, even he rejected it as over-the-top and unnecessary on college campuses because there's so many abortion clinics in the state already. But what this does is it mandates state colleges and universities to distribute this at your expense and to make these vulnerable co-eds at these campuses very, very endangered of their own lives, not only the lives of their children. But this time, the State Department of Finance said, we can't afford this. Colleges and universities, they, they need to be educated. We can't afford making all of them abortion clinics. And the implications are grave. Even the state colleges and universities did not want to administrate this. So the authors had to start playing games. You know, there's an old saying in politics, anyone who loves either laws or sausages should never watch either one being made. And that's what happened again here with SB 24. The author decided that, okay, the schools don't want to administrate it, and they say there's too much problems from the Department of Finance. We'll create a separate fund, and we'll give the illusion that it's privately funded, but read in that Planned Parenthood. And so they're going to get additional funds through Planned Parenthood, which they already have and now is considered private. But Planned Parenthood gets so much in government funds, it's ridiculous. Secondly, they decided to let the State Commission on the Status of Women administrate this on college campuses. It's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. So when Jerry Brown had vetoed this, Governor Newsom, in campaign mode, stepped up and he said, Well, if I were governor, I would sign this. And I think we need to look at the fact that, and if you're going to talk to the governor, we do want to use reason. And he is a pro-choice, quote, advocate. There's no limits in his mind. But reason still has to step in here. And to be honest, even though he said he would have signed Jerry Brown's bill back then, this isn't the same bill. These weird radical amendments have dramatically changed it such that the State Department of Finance and these other state institutions have got to create a pastiche, a patchwork quilt, where the campuses themselves won't administrate it. The the Commission on the Status of Women become the administrators. Well, they don't have such a function. It's a very odd bill. It did pass. Again, it's like making sausages. You don't want to know what's inside sausages, but it's the kind of body parts for animals that you don't eat any other way, (laughs) and such is with laws. And that's what we have in SB 24. It's gone to the governor's desk, and it awaits his either signature or veto. He must do so before October the 13th. We're going to be right back after this. I want to close out with what you can do now. Don't be discouraged. There are things that you can do as a citizen. And again, don't forget if you're pro-life that you're a citizen and you have a voice. We want you to use your voice effectively. We'll be right back. Life Matters continues after this. Life Matters is sponsored by the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of the National Right to Life Committee. To find out more on how you can help and be involved right where you are, go to californiaprolife.org. That's californiaprolife.org. We'll tell you how you can get involved in your local community, how you can be effective if you want to be a pro-life speaker. We have training programs and open doors of opportunity for you to speak on the life issue. If you'd like to donate your car or a boat, you can do that at californiaprolife.org. Car easy. 
makes it easy and you find that on our website we get the most of any donation program car easy allows us to get the most out of your car maybe you're not getting the trade-in value you want it maybe it's just not running the way it used to let your car be used for life go to californiaprolife.org and find out what you can do to make a difference californiaprolife.org be sure to subscribe to the life matters podcast with brian johnston go to lifematters.life to subscribe You know about our car donation program at California Pro-Life. We use one of the most respected programs in the nation. Go to the California Pro-Life page, californiaprolife.org. Scroll to the bottom and click on Donate My Car. It's that easy. Did you know you can also donate any vehicle, boat, motorhome, or even personal property? If you are nearing retirement age, you can also get a tax deduction by earmarking a portion of your upcoming compulsory distributions from your 401k. Just email us for information. California Pro-Life is fighting to equip California Pro-Lifers with understanding and the tools to again protect the unborn and other vulnerable innocents. Thank you for your help in this battle. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org. That's CaliforniaProLife.org for more information. Life Film Fest is the creative outreach in Hollywood that's changing Hollywood and the culture. There's many films you've already seen that actually had their start at Life Fest in Hollywood, their premiere. But more than that, we work with people throughout the industry who want to creatively bring the message of life. Not just hit you over the head with it or preach to you about it but creatively impact the culture so that the hearts and minds of our fellow citizens understand the depth and the breadth and the warp and the woof of what the right to life really is. Be part of Life Fest Film Festival and make a difference. Every life does matter. Every life is significant. Find out about the exciting cultural change impacting Hollywood. Go to lifefilmfest.com. You know, you're pretty amazing. The reason I can say that is America's founders said that about you. That's right. They said that every human being is created by a creator and given rights by that creator. Those rights are not given by the government. It's the government's job to protect those rights. And the very first and most important is the right to be alive, the right to life. If you want to be involved in the national effort, go to nrlc.org. California Pro-Life is looking for folks like you to help us bring common sense back to our state. Would you like to volunteer? For example, do you like social media? You could help. Or do you like to put on parties? You might have the skills to help us with one of our local events. Would you like to just encourage local pro-lifers with insights and information? Join one of our chapters. There's a lot to do in this state, and your help can make a difference right where you are. Go to California Pro-Life and sign up. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back. I told you it's been a crazy time in the California State Legislature. There's been other bills that have also gone to the governor. And among other things, there was another bill, AB 624. AB 624 requires every student in the state, whatever school they go to, if they have a student body card, that card must have on it the phone number for family planning. And what that is, as you know, a family planning facility usually promotes abortion. And so this is a way of reaching those kids by going around the parents, have that emergency family planning number there. This applies not only to public schools, but to charter schools and some parochial schools. So they did have it all schools, even parochial schools. They tweaked it a little bit, but they'll be coming back. Their goal is to influence children directly, to get direct access to children, and to circumvent parents. So that's Assembly Bill 624, and that's going to the governor's desk as well. And then finally, there was a mystery measure that came up, and that gives Planned Parenthood $10 million if their 
in danger of being threatened if they may have a potential of violence, which, of course, as they define it, they do feel threatened. Therefore, they're getting that $10 million. And that was thrown in last minute into the budget bill, SB 190. So a very strange world we live in. And you can see that they're out to have their way. What I want to do right now, though, is remind you as much as you need to know what they're doing, you need to know what to do about it. And the fact is, is that every one of those legislators started somewhere. Usually they start lower in the civic world. Most often I have seen they actually start at school boards and then city council and then maybe supervisor and maybe mayor, maybe not. But they'll eventually end up in Sacramento, some of them. But they made their decisions long ago when they first ran for public office. And so I want to tell you now what you can do. Right now, throughout the state of California and in many other states, people are preparing for the primary. In California, we have an early primary. It's in March. So people are deciding now to run for school board, for city council, for supervisor, and then on up. Well, the fact is, is we do follow all of the state legislators, but there are 58 counties in this state, and there are thousands of cities, townships, and school districts that we can't monitor. You can You know what? If you're a good American, you know what you're going to do? I guarantee you'll do this. You're going to vote because that's one thing we do know will come. I can't tell you the number of people that I know that are pro-life and they just don't vote. And then the number who do vote and they don't know who to vote for. We'll be able to tell you on the state level who is pro-life and who's not. But one of the most important things you can do to help us and to help the pro-life cause is get involved locally and we'll show you how to do that. You need to find out who's running for school board. Why school board? Well, you probably know in California, it is legal to secretly release a child from school for an abortion and the parents never find out. So while it's legal, you may not know that it's up to the school district whether that'll be practiced in that school district. So if you care enough to find out who's on your school board, you can change locally what's going on with abortion and on these poor vulnerable students. You can do this, and this is the easiest election to influence. You know Planned Parenthood knows that. So what's going to happen in your area? Someone's going to sit on your school board. That's guaranteed. Someone will sit on your school board. Will they be pro-life or not? Do you want to help us find out? We'll help you. Call the California Pro-Life Council, 800-924-2490, and tell them, I want to help locally. Give us your contact information. We'll get you the tools to find out who are the local candidates for school board, for city councils. You know, many city councils will fund Planned Parenthood, but not if you elect the right people. You have to find out. That's what changes a community, and that's what changes a state. If you want to see a change, if you disagree with abortion, please do something to stop it. Just don't accept it. Don't be like those people who say, oh, well, you can't legislate morality. No, I'm afraid you can, because that's what laws are. Laws represent the values of a nation. And if you're not willing to speak up for your values, I'm not sure you understand them. This battle is real. We're in a battle of ideas. And if you're not battling in this battle of ideas, then you've already lost. Thanks for listening. And again, there's lots to do. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org or call the 800 number, 800-924-2490 to find out how you can change California. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council the state affiliate of National Right to Life.